Hello and welcome back to the second semi-final. You know the drill by now. The players have already started. We are going to just jump straight into the game oh. uh, so that we can show you all uh, with the teams that both players are going to be bringing. Uh, we do have uh, Gabriele versus Jesus here and we are going to be seeing it from Gabriele's side. Yeah, exactly that. So, Sol de Leo, Zapdos, Cantonian, Landorus, Therian, Grimmsnarl, Kyogre, Incineroar. We've seen Gabriele's uh, Pokemon. It was, he was, uh, they were featured in the first stream match of today. They did incredibly well with the mode of Sol de Leo and Kyogre. Very interested to see how they match up against uh, Suse, uh, Suse, um, uh, Palkia, uh, Zashian, Grimmsnarl, Incineroar, Thunderous Incarnate, and Amundus. Yes, Ashian and Palkia was definitely a pairing that was on my radar uh, going into this, so it's very good to see it do so well uh, going into uh, going this deep into the tournament. Uh, Palkia does pair up very nicely against the opposing Kyogre, and reasonably well against the Solgaleo as well, uh, because the Solgaleo won't be able to hit it for any super effective damage, like it can go for the Wild Charge uh, or Max Lightning, as we've seen that it does have access to against Kyogre, it would be super effective, but not against the opposing Palkia instead. Uh, gonna opt for the Grimmsnarl and the Zashian coming up for Jesus' side of the field. Uh, gonna be that nice and shiny Zashin that we do have available and Grimmsnarl is also on uh, going to be on Gabriela's side of the field and there is that Solgaleo once again. Yeah, so the Solgaleo makes a lot of sense because it's not there's not something it directly is threatened by or at least it would be because it is that Assault Fest variant, right? So it pairs up very well against a Zashian here. Um, there's not a lot Zashian can do about it. It does have to be aware of the Grimmsnarl and I think this is quite similar to that first stream match actually Jamie. We had the Battle of the Grimmsnarls. What will each do? Will there just be a setup of Thunder Waves or any sort of uh, screens that are set up to add additional bot to the entire of the team. Oh, we might be seeing exactly what we saw in that previous uh, previous set, the very first one we featured. Maybe Solgaleo is just going to be boosting up the defenses of this Kyogre once again as it is directly switching in for the Grimmsnarl. And we see the Dynamax coming out from the Solgaleo like we are seeing. And that is likely the strategy that Gabriele wants to go for once again. It's very effective against the opposing Zashin. And then Grimmsnarl won't be able to do too much. It could be Senator set, uh, spend 10 seconds on a Reflect. Uh, but then that's not a turn they're spending getting damage down onto the Kyogre before the Steel Spike boost can start happening. Well, yeah, exactly that. And I think just being able to add that, uh, that supreme amount of bulk is so, so powerful. But no, we see the Thunder Wave coming out from Jesus's Grimmsnarl there. This could be big. If uh, it, you get a full paralysis with the Soul Delayer, that is really not where you want to be. But there is no such thing. We did see the Zashian, however, go for the substitute freely. There was nothing to stop it. But its partner in crime, Grimmsnarl, is now felled by that match steel spike from the Sol Galeo. So Sol Galeo able to go ahead and not only get a defensive boost up to plus one stages for itself, but also for that Kyogre that did switch in. Like you mentioned, Jamie, is the kind of strategy that we saw from Gabriele during the first three match. So very effective in that first match. Uh, mm. Palkia now joining the field with a life orb as well is going to do a very, very nice chunk of damage, especially because there hasn't been a max quake or a calm mind yet. Uh, very brave going for a substitute with the Zashin in the face of the Thunder Wave that could have come out from the opposing Grimmsnarl. Uh, yep. But no Thunder Waves coming out and can't be uh, launched off into the Zashin behind the Substitute yet. You have to spend a turn breaking the Substitute on the opposing Zashin. Now the Kyogre will outspeed the Solgaleo because of that paralysis. So the Origin Pulse would be the move of choice that would break the opposing Zashin Substitutes. But if you go for Origin Pulse, that's not a calm mind that will help you take on the Palkia a bit better. And Origin Pulse, the Palkia will absolutely shrug off, especially if it goes for Dynamax as well. Uh, so the Zashin go for that Substitute very nice play from Jesus coming out immediately. Um, and again, the Palkia is just going to be going for the Dynamax to match the Solgaleos at this point. Uh, stalled a turn of it and it went for a Steel Spike, so going to start launching off those now rain boosted, uh, immediately rain boosted rather than having to set up with its own Max Geyser. Uh, the Max Geyser will do a, a very significant chunk of damage to the Solgaleo. Even though it's got the Assault Vest, it's still going to hurt. And so will a Max Wormwind that would go in, uh, potentially go into the Kyogre as well. Well, exactly that, as we are going to be seeing the Zashin actually go on the offensive, goes for that Behemoth Blade into the Sword Galeo. Even though it is in Dynamax form, it is a Steel type, it just wants to get any sort of chip damage that it can onto it. You just need to be able to reduce its HP down as much as possible. This could even be a double up, and it is. Max Geyser in the rain is, uh, with that double up, is able to go ahead and uh, lower, uh, get Sword Galeo's HP range to be just 
just beneath half, whilst uh, Tyoda very freely, Jamie, goes and sets up that car mine. So not much stopping it from doing so. It just wants to start setting up as much as possible. We see Soldaleo assisting in that setup. Goes for the Max Quake. Yes, it does go ahead and uh, destroy that substitute uh, that the Zashin did set up. Critical hit, of course, does not matter. I think that it's always going to be uh, fading in that scenario. But more importantly, this Kyoga is building up those defenses. It's becoming very, very bulky. Um, plus one defense uh, uh, stage, plus two special defense. And it can keep rising again. You can get one more potential max move from the Sol Galeo. And if you double up into the Sol Galeo with the Behemoth Bait and the Max Geist, it should be able to pick up the knockout on the Sol Galeo. It would actually be pretty close with that extra max quake boost as well. Uh, but if it is able to still pick up the knockout, that's ignoring the Kyogre once again that could go for another Calm Mind. Or just launch the Origin Pulse at this point with a plus one stage of increased attack. That will do a huge amount of damage to the opposing Zashin. And now the Palkia can't really deal with the Kyogre anymore. The Max Worm Winds won't do much damage at all. Might have to rely on that increased critical hit ratio of the Spatial Rens uh, going uh, when the Palkia has used up its Dynamax. Uh, but yeah, the, so the Kyogre is in a very good position. Uh, just like we saw in that previous set, uh, Sogolev just boosting up its defenses so that Kyogre is in a fantastic position. Yeah, exactly that is. We're going to be seeing the Kyogre go for the Protect right now. There's no reason why it should be risking any sort of HB being essentially taken from it in that scenario. Max Quake, though, from the Palkia will be coming out first. Goes into the Sol Galeo. Not quite enough to pick up a KO onto this already boosted Sol Galeo with an Assault Vest, even if it is a Life Orb a Palkia. But we're going to be seeing, um, of course, the Max Steel Spike going into the Zacian slot right now now further boosting this um Kyogre's defense my lord it's a plus two defense plus two special defense plus one special attack and um this is kind of the strategy that Gabriele has been showing us right now the setup so Galeo is there to essentially be a conduit for Kyogre to set itself up and essentially seal off the game with the leftovers item as a choice it's got to be one of the best ways to give the defense boost to a Pokemon. Uh, oh, being that strong from the Sol Galeo, getting the stab on the Steel Spikes as well, doing a huge amount of damage, and then making your other restricted unkillable at this point is definitely a, ver a very good strategy that is, at the moment, uh, putting them in a very fantastic position to take this game one and uh, get them even closer towards that final. Uh, yeah, the Kyogre is in just such a strong position. It can go for the Origin Pulse and pick up the knockout on the Zashin at this point, and it's still going to do a reasonable amount of damage to the Amoogus that just switched in as well well but then if it takes that origin pulse that probably put it in range of the ice beam that come out as well from the the kyogre the max quake should be able to finish off the Sogaleo at least but this kyogre is still being ignored Oh yeah, most definitely, and I think it definitely will once the frames kick in and we're able to actually see what's going on. Um, special defense, uh, now up to plus two for that Palkion. Yes, Sol Galeo is definitely confirmed to be KO'd there. Uh, whilst the Amoongus is definitely benefiting from that defensive boost to Origin Pulse not dealing as much damage as you would have expected. Did get a critical hit on the Palkia, but of course Palkia having times for resistance to water type moves is definitely not the Pokemon you want to be going up against if you are Gabriele with your Kyogre setup, but that's why Zapdos is here. Zapdos is hoping to maybe sort of take away the pressure, at least from the Amoongus being on the field, and maybe the Kyogre strategy is just to slow and, you know, like chip away Palkia's uh, HP, allow uh, slowly, uh, allow Palkia's life orb recoil damage as well to whittle itself down. And the Coke is going to at least going to keep the Amoongus safe from the Hurricane that can come out. And Hydro Pump is going to blow back this up, if it goes for it. But then that's still not dealing with the Kyogre. Uh, they could just go for an Ice Beam into the Amoongus to follow up that KO. And it is really down to the Kyogre at this point to be able to take the rest of the game. It has to break through the Palkia and the Zashian. It should be able to do that with the defense boost that it's got. So it can definitely take on the Palkia, and it should be able to take care of the Amoongus. And if the Amoongus is allowed to get a Spore off into the uh, Kyogre, that could be a way back in for Jesus to be able to not have to rely on any kind of critical hits. And that might be where they're keeping the Amoongus safe for now, as if the Zapdos went for a Protect itself from this Hydro Pump, uh, but the Amoongus shouldn't be taking any Ice Beams here. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense too, because um, Zapdos detecting there is aware of its uh, situation's position that it could go ahead and really put on the offensive pressure that it needs to against Yasus' Pokemon. And I think we may have seen an Origin Pulse miss there coming up from the Kyogre, as the rain does now expire. And so just, just 
do pretty much exactly the same thing. Still can just go for a nice beam into that Amoongus. Uh, yeah. the stalling out your own rain is a bit, a little bit awkward. It's going for the Protect, uh, but Amoongus uh, maybe going for the Protect because of that option, because the rain was going to be stalled out. Now, if you want to go for the Hurricane, it will be a bit more uh, shaky accuracy if you're going to hit, but you could still just click Heat Wave instead, and that covers the switch into the Zashian to an extent as well, because that would do a, a reasonable amount of damage to the Zashian that would switch in, and if it just stays in, you just get to go for Heat Wave. Uh, do miss the Amoongus, unfortunately. A little bit more accurate than Hurricane would have been, uh, so maybe now it's able to survive this Ice Beam, and if it is, you can get that Spore into the Kyogre. Oh, but there's a miss as well, uh, an evade on the Zapdos. Palkia is not able to connect its attack, and the Heat Wave missing means that this Amoongus is able to go ahead and get that Spore onto the Kyogre, putting it asleep. Next turn, guaranteed sleep turn as well for it. Yeah, that was an interesting turn. The Heat Wave would have almost certainly be able to pick up the knockout on that Amoongus, uh, and then, then you don't go to sleep with the Kyogre, and then you're still sitting, sitting pretty comfortable. Uh, the fact that the rain disappeared as well means that Hydro Pump will be really close if it's able to pick up the knockout on the Zapdos, but because you got that spot into the opposing uh, Kyogre, that means you can switch out the Amoongus, get the Regenerator going. Zashin should be able to survive a Heat Wave even if it, that is launched off by the opposing Zapdos, because it is that safety goals instead of anything like a Life Orb, uh, but yeah, it's going <laughs> to oh, <laughs> another hit. Another heat wave dodge on the Pokemon you did want to hit. Oh my lord. Talk about RNGs as being present. We see Palkia going for Spatial Ren now. Does connect with the Zapdos. Nearly picks up the KO as well. Very shy off of it. As Kyogre will be taking its guaranteed turn of sleep. I'm pretty sure it was the Spatial Ren that missed uh, previously rather than the Hydro Pump. So uh, that was particularly unlucky that, oh, that, that, that came out. But... Yeah, managed to dodge the heat wave as well so twice now with the Amoongus that would have almost certainly been KO'd and a nice chunk of miss damage on the Zashian as well. Zapdos is so low at this point that you can go for just a Behemoth Blade to take care of the Zapdos. Uh, you could just go for a Spatial Rend as well uh, because you, if you go for the Behemoth Blade into the Zapdos, that is risking a potential static that could come out. But if that doesn't happen, then it's a bit better to go for the Behemoth Blade into the Zapdos uh, because then you can just take take care of that and go for a Spatial Rend to try and crit through the special defense boost uh, that the Kyogre has gone for, but it's just opting for play rough instead into the Kyogre, and still a reasonable chunk even with the defense boost. Yeah, and I think Kyogre at this point has just been set up to be a huge damage sponge. It has the leftovers to try to recover HP over time. We see the double up there, it's able to take it quite nice. I say quite nicely. It's a guaranteed two hit KO with the double up, but regardless, if this Kyogre can somehow wake up at any point, get a bit of a, let's say, a protect going, it could add to the leftovers effect of recovering HP. But in this scenario, I think Jesus is relatively in the driver's position as Zashian and Palkia do outspeed um, the threats over on Gabriella's Pokemon side. And so Kyogre does at least wake up, so it is able to protect itself. And that will give it some more leftovers recovery as well. And could potentially give the switch into the Gremsnarl as the Behemoth Blade is being launched into the opposing Zap boss. That is the potential for the static to come out. That would be very useful for this Kyogre right now if the Zashin gets paralyzed. Otherwise, you have to rely on the Grip Thunder Weapon Gremsnarl, but there is the static. So that was the downside of going for Behemoth Blade into the Zap boss. Yeah, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about Zapdos once again. It's got that passive chance to inflict any sort of a paralysis status onto physical contact moves that uh, obviously do go ahead and attack it. So, um, Kyogre waking up is super, super beneficial for Gabriele because in this scenario, I think they got access to screens or even maybe another, uh, let's say, a Thunder Wave onto the Palkia and try to hope for RNG to go their way. As Jamie is... Yeah, um, sorry, I'm here. Yes. Oh, he is present. Hello. I am, I am present. Hello again. Uh, so, yes, the, the Kyogre, is, it's still... It's used up its Protect at this point, so I can't go for that again to get more leftovers recovery, but no Thunder Waves coming out. Special Rend's just hitting into that Kyogre with the Special Defense Boost still able to shrug it off. Is it able to connect the Origin Poles onto that Zashian? It missed something, and it was the Palkia, at least. Oh. So that's the one you want to hit. You do want to hit the Zashian. Yeah. No, it definitely is, as Zashian's gonna go and actually survive. It does move, it breaks out of the paralysis, goes for the play rough, does pick up the KO, and we do see Jesus going ahead and running away, I believe, with this game one from what it looks like. Sure, Spirit Break is gonna go ahead and pick up the Palkia with the KO, but in this scenario, it's quite tough for Grimmsnarl to be able to exert uh, any huge amounts of damage output onto the Zashian. Sure, there is a chance of uh, full paralysis, but let's not forget, there is the Amoongus to redirect.
That's right, you just full, full par fully paralyze the Amoogus as well, and then you get oh, yeah. that forever as you go well, for multiple it. spirit breaks. But yeah, yes, it is, it is looking heavily in Jesus' favor. Uh, you can just go for Rage Powder or even just try and protect and spore at this point. Uh, it is incredibly unlikely that Gabriele would be able to win. They are going to forfeit this game and not going to opt for the Thunder Wave shenanigans because it would have been, you would have needed a lot of full paralysis to end up winning that game. Uh, but yep. yeah, there is quite unfortunate uh, for uh, Gabriele. They had a very, very reasonable strategy with that, boosting uh, the Kyogre, uh, but those Heatwave dodges were very crucial. If the Heatwave just connects with the Amoongus, that allows the Kyogre to just not be put to sleep and be able to just launch off those Origin Pulses and Ice Beam straight away, but it had to contend with those sleep turns, and that made it a bit more awkward. The Zapdos lost a turn of just going for Detect as the Kyogre was doubled up as well. It did miss the Zashin on the switch in as well. That would have put it in range of the Origin Pulse because uh, it was able to survive that attack as well. So so a uh, little, little bit unfortunate for Gabriele. Things would have rolled a little bit uh, differently. They definitely had the potential to win that game because that Solgolo uh, boosting up the Kyogre strategy is still working out very well for them and it had the potential to work out very well there. Yeah. No, it definitely did, and I think um, that's the thing about it. You've got this kind of team where you set, it's based on setup, right? So you've got a lot of setup. Sure, we didn't see a direct critical hit to go ahead and completely negate all of the defensive um, boosts uh, that, for example, Kyogre had, um, but it's kind of reliant on RNG. You need to be able to at least um, get lucky in not getting lucky, if that makes sense. <laughs> not getting unlucky, I guess, is the, the way we're <laughs> looking at it. But, yeah, there was the opportunity to uh, just immediately go for a Thunder Wave with the Grim Snarl on Gabriella's side of the field because the Zashin did opt for a substitute uh, on that turn one. You can go for a Thunder Wave before that substitute uh, happens. And really, you could just lead with the Solgaleo and Kyogre as well. And we've seen multiple times that Gabriella has been on the stream. They lead with the Grim Snarl and then switch into the Kyogre to get the boost. Whereas if they just lead with Solgaleo and Kyogre, you can just boost and attack or Calm Mind on that turn as well. And that wouldn't be losing a turn uh, to the switch out. So it makes sense to lead with Grim Snarl. A lot of players do, do opt to lead with Grim Snarls just to get those screens up straight away and have that Thunder Wave pressure. But if that is the strategy that uh, is opted for for Gabriele, there is the potential to just go straight with Kyogre and start attacking, start Calm Minding as well, because it'll be able to take on the uh, Zashian pretty well. Uh, you, you could contend with a potential play rough into the Grimmsnarl slot, uh, because that is still going to absolutely KO a Grimmsnarl and would do a very reasonable chunk of damage to a Kyogre that, sw that switches in. You still have to contend with a Thunder Wave that could come out from the Grimmsnarl at that point. But then that should be okay, because the Kyogre is not the one that's getting the defense boosts and that seems to be the strategy that Gabrielle is going for to get those defense boosts on the Kyogre and if you just target down that slot with a play rough if that we're seeing similar leads then that will put a stop to that yeah and that would make a lot of sense but let's go ahead and find out what the situation is gonna be in this game two we have Jesus leading with Palkia and Grimmsnarl whilst over on Gabrielle's side we do once again see the Sol de Leo and their own Grimmsnarl so um are we feeling like there's gonna be any sort of relative Thunder Wave plays once again coming out here Jamie because I think Thunder Wave it's just too good of a move isn't it once you have Grimmsnarl and you've got it in your move pool to use. Yeah, there's no real downside for going for the, the Thunder Waves this turn. Uh, the only downside for Gabriele would, if they opt to stay in and set up a screen or go for the Thunder Wave, would mean they don't get that boost on the Kyogre. But it's actually Jesus that's going to be switching out this time. They're restricted to switching out uh, into that opposing Zashian. So, an odd thing to leave with it this time, going to be switching in for the Palkia. I'm not going to use up any of its turns of Dynamax uh, this time. Maybe wanted to stall out the Dynamax of the Solgaleo so that they can use their Dynamax once that's being used up. Uh, because the Grimmsnarl did just stay in here. It's almost certainly going to go down to that steel spike boost that can come out from uh, the opposing solo layer, but that does risk the thunder waves that can come out from the Grimmsnarl on Jesus's side of the field uh, but the Grimmsnarl did opt to stay in this time that is a lost defense boost that could have happened onto the Kyogre yeah definitely would be and I feel like at this point maybe uh Gabriele expecting Jesus to expect actually that to anticipate the switch in so going for that thunder wave it does connect onto the Sol de Leo whilst we do actually see um the light screen being set up from Gabriele's side uh, Max Steel Spike however does come out does pick up a one hit KO of course onto Jesus says Grim Snarl it is out for the count it only came for one thunder wave and it left so now the Sol de Leo does have that plus one in its defense boost which is a very very solid against a um zashian but uh also having the light screen just means that you're once again getting that necessary bolt to outbulk your opponent 
if you yeah, and, and, yeah now, and now that Amoongus has joined the field but you can't support the Sol Galeos, so yeah. now you can just still just start going for those uh, defensive boosts again once again you can go for a Max Quake if you want to do some very good damage to the opposing Zacian uh, you can go for a Thunder Wave into the Zacian if you wanted to that forces a Rage Powder from the Amoongus uh, which means that the Grimmsnarl slot would not be taking a Spore which it very much should be at this point a Steel Spike wouldn't be enough on the Amoongus does have access to uh, Psychic Fangs on the Sol Galeo, so it could opt for the Mindstorm instead. Mindstorm should be strong enough to be able to KO the Amoongus, and it's just not often we see that on, on Sol Galeos, but that is a coverage move that is available. And if you do take care of the Amoongus, that will immediately put Jesus down to the last two Pokemon. As we're going to be seeing the Zacian opting to go for this Protect right here, it does not want to um, potentially... Oh, actually, no, we see a double Protect here. I was maybe thinking uh, that Jesus could have gone for a Spore into the Grimmsnarl there and uh, go for that Protect to negate any sort of Thunder Waves coming out, but no. Gabriele's Grimmsnarl just wants to set up uh, the screens. Now, it's got Reflect on the field. Uh, Sol Galeo, however, has finally gone for a um, Dynamax move, which is not Steel Spike or Quake. It is Max Mindstorm. It goes into that Amundra slot, does set up the Psychic Terrain, but more importantly, it probably has guaranteed that if it goes for Max Mindstorm once again into that slot, it will pick up that KO. Yeah, it absolutely will pick up the KO, and so if the Palkia switches in, then that would be most likely KO'd with the Terrain Boost as well at this point, so still pretty reasonable use of the Soul Glow. Not opting for the strategy of just boosting up the Kyogre. Maybe we're going to see it on the final turn of the Dynamax, but no, it's just going to be the Zapdos instead. But yeah, you just get to click Max Mindstorm into that Amoongus slot at this point. You get the substitute with the Zacian at this point, uh, but you should just be able to take care of the Amoongus now. Yeah, but no Rage Powder here, so maybe trying to go for that Spore play. We are going to be seeing the Max Quake coming out. It goes into that Zacian slot. It does get rid of its substitute, but it does allow um, Gabriele's side to be susceptible to this Amundus' Spore. And we do um, know, actually, though, that if uh, the Zapdos does carry the Safety Goggles, uh, however, I didn't actually realize. I only did, and we all did now in-game as well. So a lovely, lovely switch in there, which which makes a lot of sense from Gabriele. Yes, very, very nice positioning. That was completely safe against the Amoongus. You get to break the substitute of the Zacian and you can't be spored because the full the, the paralysis that's on the Sol Galeo and the safety cord was on the Zapdos. So now you can just go for a Heat Wave and be able to do some very good damage to both Pokemon. And the Sol Galeo would be able to follow up with a KO into either Pokemon, whether that's going to be just the Sun Seal Strike into the Zacian. A uh, Heat Wave and a Sun Seal Strike should be enough to pick up that KO. And the Psychic Fangs would be enough to pick up the knockout on the opposing Amoongus. And the Palkia would be able to resist the Heat Wave switch at least but if you're going for the psychic fangs into the amoongus slot that would still trunk it if the zashin switches out and and the palkia takes the sun still strike that wouldn't hurt as much uh, but not going to be able to go on the offensive with, with the zashin just going to be protecting itself Oh, and I feel like there's going to be a heat wave. Let's see if it does connect. It does decide to do so this time round with the heat wave onto that Amoongus. Um, it doesn't deal as much damage as you would have expected. I think that's uh, due to the fact that, of course, um, there may have been a boost, if I'm not uh, mistaken, or maybe a light screen. Apologies, I think the stream is um, lagging at this point, but we have actually seen the Sol Galeo opting to go for that Earthquake. And a Giga Drain from this... Uh, a moon desk into the Zapdos slot, maybe anticipating the switch out there. Yeah, I think I think that's what we call just a little bit of chip, and that's <laughs> that, 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 that's not going to do too much at this point. No, the Zashin has used up its protect. If you just go for another heat wave and earthquake, that should pick up the knockout on the opposing Zashin. It does have to opt for this double protect, which it did fail here. Heat wave does connect with both Pokemon. That's going to definitely KO the Amoongus. Now, is the Sol Galeo going to get paralyzed? Oh, let's find out, ladies and gents, what's going on here. Earthquake does come out. It's not paralyzed. Zapdos, of course, is immune to that Earthquake, and Zashian, as a result of that, uh, does get KO'd, unfortunately. So, Gabriele is starting to pick off Jesus' Pokemon uh, slowly yet surely. That is what they need to do right now if they want to try to force this into a Game 3, as Palkia is going to be coming back onto the field uh, for Jesus' side. As uh, we do unfortunately have a bit of lag, a bit of frame drops. We do apologize, but it does seem to be uh, Gabriele having an overwhelming advantage, I feel, 4 to 1. They absolutely do. With the 4 to 1 against the Palkia is going to be uh, very hard for the Palkia to overcome. You've got to contend with the light screen that uh, the Grim Snarl can set. It can just go for a Thunder Wave at any point. You can start calm minding as soon as your Kyogre hits the field. 
both Pokemon shouldn't be KO'd to one max move at this point. So I'd be pretty close with the Zapdos. Maybe the Zapdos would be, be able to KO based on the spatial rend damage previously, because it doesn't seem like it's that bulky based on its HP and the fact it took so much damage previously. But then if you're going for the KO into the Zapdos, that just gives the switch into the Grim Snarl at some point. You can just go for a Spirit Break or a Thunder Wave to, to be able to neuter the Palkia and then start kind of mining up eventually with your Kyogre as well. So it seemed like Gabrielle is slightly altered their strategy rather than just trying to boost up the Kyogre, more focused on the damage that was coming out from the Solgaleo and, and was able to spread enough damage so that they could just eventually overwhelm the, the team on Jesus' side of the field and then Palkia was just not going to do it in that end game. So yeah, it's definitely a very, very nice switch up from Gabrielle. I think they needed to do it because uh, in the end of the day, sure, you can, you know, uh, set up as much as you want with regards to your bulk, but you need to get rid of the Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field. That That's essentially it. You need to get rid of the threats that can stop you. And Gabriella did that overwhelmingly well. I think they did great. So um, now the balls in uh, Jesus's side of the field, how will they adapt to this strategy? Because I feel like Gabriella can easily go back to the switch ups with Kyoga if they wanted to uh as like in game one but they have to be cautious that palkia can really uh, be problematic for that strategy yeah it definitely would be you know we'll have to see if they're just gonna dynamax the palkia immediately it, it would be good to dynamax the palkia so you can start attacking before any of the boost that can come out from the solgaleo because that seems to be what gabriele is going for just immediate dynamax with the solgaleo get those boosts immediately start spreading spreading huge amounts of damage as well uh, so you do want to try and put a stop to that. Uh, maybe just still going for the Thunder Waves to the Grim Snarl uh, could be st still working out if you get a full paralysis here or there. But the fact that the Grim Snarl has just been led, it's got the Thunder Wave onto the Solgaleo, but I don't think it's been fully paralyzed yet at all. Uh, and then it just gets immediately dropped to the Steel Spike. So I have to see if that is going to be still the strategy that Jesus wants to go for. Is that eventually you're going to get a full paralysis if you do go for that. But then that's still effectively sacrificing a whole Pokemon just for a status condition that hasn't really come into play yet. Well, yeah, and I think um, that's just a testament to why Solgaleo is actually an underrated restricted, in my opinion. It, it's got the full metal body um, ability, which essentially acts as a clear body. You cannot drop its stats at all. Um, uh, and it just, it's such a threat. It's got a very vast amount of HP pool um, as it's a base stat, and it's got a lot of coverage as well. So having it in this sort of strategy is really, really cool to see. You've got the screen support from the Grim Snarls, and... Um, you've got Assault Vest on it too, so good luck trying to take it down if you're a Kyoto, let's say. But um, of course, we do see the leads. Uh, Amoongus, Grimmsnarl this time around on the Hyasusa side, whilst we do have Solgaleo and Grimmsnarl yet again on Gabrielis. Yeah, it's a much slower lead from Jesus' side of the field. Much more passive. It looks like they're just going to try and spore that Solgaleo. Maybe a Reflect will allow the Amoongus to be able to survive a Max Mindstorm. If it does, then that's going to put a stop to the Solgaleo immediately. Uh, it could go for something like a Max Lightning, because that would uh, be able to put a stop to the spores immediately. They'll be using upper turn of max uh, for a slightly less optimal attack for the turn one, but it would mean that the Solgaleo would be able to get off its other two max moves because it would be immune to the spore uh, going yep. forwards. And yeah, the, ref the Reflect's going to be set up for the Grimstone on Gabriel's side of the field. Wouldn't be surprised if we see that on Jesus' side of the field, is what we see. Can Amoongus survive a Mindstorm, or are we going to see a Lightning just to guarantee there's no spores? Well, yeah, we just see double reflects from both sides of the field and Max Lightning, like you mentioned, Jamie. It, it makes a lot of sense. It is a lot of um, risk trying to go ahead and waste one of your three Dynamax turns for this. But in this situation, it's just really worked out for Gabriele as that Amoongus failed to get any sort of sleep status inflicted onto Gabriele's Pokemon. Yeah, that was a, a, a nice choice for the Max Lightning. You get to use your Max moves now uh, for yeah. the Soul Galea, which is uh, very beneficial. And you've got the opportunity now to just switch into one of your Pokemon and start boosting them up. Uh, you only get two boosts at least. You had to use a turn going for the Lightning. But some boosts are better than no boosts, of course. And you get to get those boosts before the opposing Restricteds are hitting the field. So you're not really going to be taking too much damage. You could take a Thunder Wave on the switch in. Uh, Thunder Wave is almost certainly going to be the uh, status of choice for the Grimstar now. And the Moose is keeping it safe for many. Any potential mind storms, uh, but the so spirit break would still be able to do some reasonable damage to the Kyogre. But now that Spore isn't an option, the Solgaleo is paralyzed once again. 
yeah, it is paralyzed, and I think that's what Jesus has to count down uh, towards because the Dream Star is always going to be going down there, right? Um, they need to be able to get that potential RNG um, situation going for themselves, other than the speed control for ladder turns, because uh, RNG is still a strategy, you gotta do it, and that's what Thunder Wave basically is. It's pure RNG, and let's say at its finest, because it's so random, um, but in this situation, um, Amoongus is on the field, all it can do is redirect. Palkia has a good um, switch in for Jesus here, but they've just gotta be cautious um, of uh, Gabriele's uh, build-up. Uh, stacking up of the defenses right now because they have reverted to the game one strategy um, as opposed to going for the pure damage. Yeah, it seems like they would just want to just max Quake up there, Kyogre, get the Calm Minds as well, uh, so that they can just take on the Palkia and the Amoongus a bit better. And there's no option to change the terrain for uh, Jesus' side of the field, so you can't spore any of the Pokemon at this point. You've got to wait for at least three turns, uh, and that's even if the Amoongus is able to make it through those turns as well, uh, because you could go for a Mindstorm to KO the Amoongus, but then that wouldn't be giving a boost to the Kyogre and the Solgaleo, and it would give it a switch into the Zashin, which would be able to start doing some massive damage pair alongside this Dynamax Palkia as well, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we just see the Palkia just dealing massive, massive damage in the raid to the Solgaleo. Uh, because the Solgaleo is paralyzed, it's definitely going to be underspeeding the Palkia as well. He'll be able to do some very good damage before any of the uh, any of the Quakes can come out, but Snogger opting instead for the, high, the Max Geyser is just going to be boosting their own special defense with their own Quake. Well, yeah, because at this point, you want to be able to outboost your opponent as much as you can, at least when it comes to adding additional bulk to the side, to your side of the field. As you know, this Kyogre is going to go for Calm Mind. It has no reason not to, and that is exactly what we're going to be seeing right now. We see that plus one defense, uh, plus one special defense, plus one special attack, and now it's going straight up to plus two special defense. And I think this is basically a slobber knocker of a uh, match between... Uh, uh, who can get whatever damage uh, chip onto uh, the other super bulky opponent's side. Yeah, the Sogoneo is so well trained, it hasn't got fully paralyzed on any of its max turns, and that was nine of them that it just went through, so very, very well trained Sogoneo. Uh, another, little bit, another little bit of chip from the Giga Drain as well into the Kyogre, uh, but you really just get to just keep going for Calm Minds for a little while at this point with the Kyogre. If you get another Calm Mind, then in the rain, you'll be able to KO the Zashin with the Origin Pulse. If you get another uh, three Calm Minds, it'll probably be able to KO even outside of the rain if that ends up getting stalled out. And there should still be two more turns of the Max Lightning, or the Electric Terrain, I should say, on the field, so that the Kyogre can't be spored. And by that time, you should have probably taken care of the Amoongus, whether that's with any Psychic Fangs that can come out from the Solgaleo, or just the Ice Beams from the Kyogre. If you get another Calm Mind boost, then you should be able to just Oko that Amoongus with an Ice beam as well. And now that the Sogaleo has lost its side of Max, this Max Geyser should be doing a huge chunk of damage, what? but with the Assault Vest and the Quakes, it's still able to shrug it, to shrug it off. Yeah, it really is. It's still hanging in this good old Solgaleo as Kyogre's going for its second car mind. The electric terrain is on the field. There is nothing uh, to threaten this Kyogre in front There it is. Of oh, there it is, Jamie. You <laughs> bloody Jamie, commentator's curse, man. But um, <laughs> get to see it fully paralyzed as uh, Amoongus is going to go try to get a bit of chip damage onto the now plus uh, two or plus three, sorry, special defense. Kyogre, thanks to the two Calm Minds and that Max Quake. It's not the worst for Paralysis, like, it's a little bit of misdamage, but uh, that's not the worst thing. You could have got uh, Psychic Fangs into the Amoongus, um, you probably won't be able to now. The Palkia is probably going to be able to pick up the knockout on that yeah. Solgaleo with another Max Quake. You should opt for the Max Quake at this point, that will be strong enough to KO, and will give you another special defense boost so you can take on the Kyogre a bit better, and allow maybe the Amoongus to make it through the, the, turn, the last turn of the Electric Train and then be able to spore the Kyogre, because with those special defense boosts that it's getting as well, and the fact that it's definitely not taking an ice beam this turn because it is protecting itself uh, may mean it's able to survive this last couple of turns so it can get that spore that was so useful in that game one into the kyogre in this game three yeah, and we're seeing um, Jesus actually apply, uh, try to, let's say, apply Gabriele's uh, kind of strategy of uh, out-bulking themselves as much as possible and try to turn it against them right now, give them a bit of a dose of their own medicine, as um, I don't see how this Kyogre is going to honestly be able to whittle down this Palkia's HP. Now that it's at um, plus two of its special defense, I believe, it is very, very bulky, times four resisting of water-type moves. Yes, it is neutral to ice type moves but um it's gonna be a lot of work and we do see this amoongus coming in rain is still on the field unless it will be running out very shortly 
It should, should be pretty shortly. Uh, but the Palkia, it's, because it's Life Orb, it's still going to be just KOing itself eventually. It's going to have a, a few hits in it, and it would be a decent few hits, but not so much into a very specially defensive boosted Kyogre. So that should be able to struggle with the Spatial Rens to an extent. Uh, that rate is still up, so the Zapdos would just be blown back by a Hydro Pump if the Palkia opts to go for that. As we saw, it was able to survive the Life Orb Spatial Ren, so you would need to opt for Hydro Pump if you want that one-hit KO on the Zapdos. Uh, but the Electric Terrain has gone now, so the Amoongus, it's got some special defense moves from the Quakes as well. A uh, Hurricane is going to hit into the Cobra Ray of, of the Amoongus, so that's not going to be able to pick up the knockout. You probably need to double up with a Hurricane and an Ice Beam, but we'll have to see if that's enough to even pick up the uh, knockout onto the Amoongus because of those special defense moves. And the Hydro Pump does connect with the Zapdos, so that is absolutely going to blow back in the rain. Oh my lord, that is huge! One hit KO, Zapdos is out of contention completely of this game. We do see the Ice Beam coming out now, hoping to get a freeze, I feel, is what Gabriella should be doing, as no, it does not connect. We do see, however, the Spore doing so, putting that Kyogre to sleep, which of course will mean that Kyogre has to uh, incur a guaranteed turn of sleep in the subsequent turn coming up, and... All of a sudden, I feel like Jesus has been able to uh, honestly use Gabriele's uh, tactics against themselves. Yeah, this is absolutely putting Jesus in the driving seat at this point. Uh, Grimmsnarl, it can get some Thunder Waves down for, sh for sure. It can get the screens back up again, uh, but the Spore into the Kyogre, it's going to lose another turn. You could switch out the Amoongus to get some Regenerator as well, so that it will be able to uh, re recover itself out up a bit and get the Zashin onto the field so it can start dealing some massive damage to the opposing Kyogre because it didn't get any of the defensive boosts uh, that it liked to get in the previous games. The Play Rough is going to do a massive amount of damage to the Kyogre. Uh, maybe you just do need to to focus down on this Grimmsnarl with the Palkia and the Amoongus and then eventually get your Zashin in so it can just collect the play rough into the um, opposing Kyogre. There's not too much stopping you from just going for a Spore and a Protect with the Palkia. Uh, if you want to guarantee that there's no Thunder Waves that can come out into the opposing Palkia, uh, you could very justifiably risk the Thunder Wave full paralysis uh, coming out because then if it's going for the Thunder Wave, it's not going for any kind of Spirit Break into the Palkia and then you'll be able to do some very good damage with the Hydro Pump on the Spore. Uh, but switching out the Palkia here instead, going into the Zashin, if you're going for a Rage Powder, that makes that incredible incredibly safe because the Zashin won't take any kind of Thunder Waves, uh, but if you do want to go for a Spore into the Grim Snarl as well, that would still be a very be beneficial play. It just depends on whether there's going to be any kind of Thunder Wave going into that Zashin, but no Thunder Wave at all. It's just going to be the screen, and Amoogus is, is just a free to go for a Spore here. Exactly that, and I think Jesus is uh, well aware of the situation. That is why they opted to bring that Z Zashian in onto the field, so it could just go ahead, try to get, deal as much damage as it can, maybe even pick up a one hit KO if it can with the Behemoth Blade onto the Grim Snarl. But of course, I think the Tyoga is uh, the main threat here, not the Grim Snarl. So they're gonna have to try to slow it down. You could even switch out the Amundus here, to be fair, try to get a regenerator going. I don't think Palkia has got anything to fear now that Grim Snarl has to take that one turn of guaranteed. Sleep. Yeah, and then you just gotta hope that your Kyogre can take, make it through the, the onslaught from the Zashin. Play Rough will do a huge amount of damage to the, the Grim Snarl. If you do want to take care of Thunder Wave potential, you can go for Behemoth Blade this turn and play the Sleep turns on the Kyogre. Oh. Origin Pulse shouldn't be able to pick up the knockout on the Zashin. It definitely won't on the Amoongus with all the special defense boosts it's got. And if it goes for Ice Beam into the Amoongus, that's not attacking the Zashin at all, and it'll be able to just go for Play Rough uh, in the future as well. Uh, so it just depends on the priority of Jesus and what kind of Sleep turns they, uh, Sleep rolls they want to play with. Because you got a guaranteed hit into the Grim Snarl at this point and a guaranteed KO if you go for the Behemoth Blade, uh, which is the move of choice that is being locked in by the Sashin. So it looks like they are playing the odds somewhat because there's, um, the Grim Snarl is going to be KO'd here. The Kyogre could still stay asleep and it, do it may not even connect the Origin Pulse if it does wake up as well. Yeah, exactly that. And I think it's just about, um, you know, minimizing. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. Oh, my Lord. Oh, you did it. Jamie. <laughs> Origin Pulse <laughs> comes out. The Kyoto wakes up. Turn one. Origin Pulse comes out. Zashian evades. My Lord. So much RNG in just one turn. <laughs> um, Giga Drain comes out. Deals a bit of chip damage. I'm surprised there wasn't a crit with that Giga Drain. But yeah, it's going to be able to recover that tiny bit of HP. And Jamie is all to blame.
<laughs> yes, entirely my fault there with the Origin Pulse miss. Um, now, the Mungus with the recovery of the Giga Drain, it might be able to survive another Origin Pulse. Uh, the Zashian, it should be able to survive like one Origin Pulse out of the rain. Uh, so you would have needed to connect with two of them there. It just depends if Play Rough connects at this point. If Play Rough does connect, I'm pretty sure that Jesus will be able to take this game pretty comfortably. Uh, even if it, it doesn't, then uh, then Zashian probably should still be able to survive, and then you get another opportunity, and the Mungus can go for just another spawn into the Kyogre. That means you kind of need to pick up the knockout on the Amoongus with the Origin Pulse as well, and it's based on the previous damage. It may not be able to. That might mean you need to opt for Ice Beam into the Amoongus to guarantee there's no sport, and just hope that you dodge play rough, because if you do dodge play rough, that will definitely put you back into the game, and if you go to sleep and again, then you're almost certainly going to lose at that point. The Zashin could switch up to just Sacred Sword or Behemoth Blade for the guaranteed accuracy and be able to deal with the Kyogre in that regard. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be the player off, and it does connect. That is a nice chunk of damage onto the Kyogre. That really is. That's a two-hit KO. Ice Beam does come out from that Kyogre. Uh, no missing whatsoever. No going for Origin Pulse there. Does pick up the KO and uh, does force the situation with Palkia is now going to be coming back onto the field. And um, Kyogre is probably likely going to be going for a Protector um, unless you have to try to go for the attack given the Zashian can just set up a substitute on you. Yeah, and yeah, you got you got to hope for the dodges at this point. So you can go for a, just like one, one protect to get the leftovers. That wouldn't be enough. So you probably do need to just attack at this point and hope there's some dodges. Uh, you can go for Earth Power very safely with the Palkia as well. Uh, you could just go for um, the Behemoth Blade and the Earth Power. That might be enough uh, with two Earth Powers. Uh, probably probably not uh, not too great with the Calm Mind Boost and the Quake Boost as well. Uh, so going for Substitute makes absolute sense to try and dodge any of the Origin Pulses. This gives you four up opportunities to dodge an origin pulse and you can just slowly chip away with the spatial rends that does connect into the Kyogre at this point we're just doing a reasonable amount of damage it's going to be offset a bit by the leftovers uh, but yeah like going for substitute with the Zashin makes total sense here you've got yeah. four chances to dodge this origin pulse and if you dodge one at any point then you'll just be able to follow up uh, with some KOs and just be very safe on the uh, opposing origin pulses as well so just slowly chipping away at this Kyogre at this point well, exactly, and I think if you're Jesus, if you're able to chip away the Kyogre's HP within a certain range, you can even go for the Behemoth Blade, in all honesty. Um, if, uh, you know, you're just worried about missing a play rough for whatever reason, hmm, I wonder why. It's not as if we haven't seen a lot of RNG already. Rock but Costas, um, just don't, don't say oh, things no, like oh, that. No, we've, already, right. we've already done too much. We've already oh, done no. too much. So oh, no. we, we will see how that goes. But, like, it, it just makes sense. But, like, Sassium should probably click Substitute three more times uh, yeah. at this point. And right. if the spatial rends do that much damage, then you can just absolutely go for Behemoth Blade. But no, we just need to connect one player up. Oh. And it does not KO the Kyogre, but the spatial rends does connect with the Kyogre, finishing off the Kyogre, and will launch Jesus into the final against Paul Royce. There we go. We've got your second finalist decided. Commiserations to Gabriele. They played very, very well. We've been uh, following them quite literally ever since the first stream match of today. So huge congrats to them for this top four, as we are going to be seeing, like you mentioned, Jesus is the second finalist there in the finals um very tough best of three there um you know there's a lot going on there's a lot of out bulking uh you know like i'd say game one and game three had a lot of setup with regards to you know defense special defense boost and whatnot but game two was definitely the more quicker paced one the more damage based one so it was tough Definitely, but I think that Jesus was just able to adapt that strategy from Gabriele themselves and just go for it and out, you know, damage them in a way at the end. Yeah, there was uh, a few missed opportunities of the Max Moose to be able to boost the uh, Kyogre. You had to waste a turn going, but not particularly waste a turn, but use up a turn uh, going for Max Lightning instead of any Max Steel Spikes on a Kyogre just so you didn't go to sleep. Uh, so, yeah, that seemed to be the main strategy of Gabriella, and it definitely worked out multiple times. Uh, but uh, losing those Max turns, not even to Thunder Waves, uh, which was very fortunate, uh, but losing mm. the turns of the defensive boost uh, just was a bit too much. If that Kyogre would have had just one defense boost, that player off was doing significantly less damage it was probably turning into a four shot factoring in uh, the leftovers so uh, that was definitely the the down downfall of that kyogre it got some great special defense boosts against palkia but then couldn't take on the sashian well yeah exactly that and as a result we did see that the palkia was just able to go through and we've got a palkia in the finals jamie i'm very happy to see that personally but um of course what we are going to be doing is uh we are going to be cutting to a very short break 
wait for both of the trainers, the finalists, to get their match set up, and then we're going to go straight into it. Get ready. Don't go anywhere. Get your snack. I will be right back very shortly.